Hi everyone, my name's Jay. I'm from Jersey and Co Dog Training. Um, but more importantly, this is Jersey. She is the founder of Jersey and Co Dog Training. Um, she is a 12 year old Border Collie cross pointer. She was a pound puppy. She was beaten and abused before I got her. We have spent many and many years working on her training and everything. So she has overcome most of her fears, but she's still a rescue dog. Okay, she's still a pound puppy at heart. So she still does have a few little fears here and there. And I'm gonna show you how to work around those types of fears with your dog in grooming, okay? So firstly, I'd like to thank you, I thank Refresh for having me on stage. And I'd like to thank you guys for joining me on stage with Refresh. So, um, did anybody catch Dr. Shenny talking earlier? She had a fantastic talk about body language and calm grooming and how you can incorporate that as a vet. Well, I'm gonna talk to you about how you can incorporate it as a dog trainer as well. So I'm a canine behavioral trainer. I've been doing this for about 13 years now. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna talk to you about is how we would introduce a new grooming tool or grooming process or pretty much anything to your dogs really. So the technique that I'm gonna be using with Jersey today, it doesn't have to be used for brushes and blow dryers and grooming equipment. It can be used for a vacuum. It can be used for a whipper snipper, a lawn mower, anything that might scare your dog, okay? So, I think Jersey wants to do some work. And what I'm gonna do here is, now Jersey has actually had a bath this morning. As you can probably tell, I haven't brushed her, okay? Because I wanted to leave that to, for you guys to see on stage about how much fur will come out with this de-shedding tool from Refresh. So, first of all, actually introduced Jersey to this brush before. Okay, Refresh sent it to me a little while ago. I brushed my cats with it and got so much fur out, it was insane. Um, but I purposely didn't introduce Jersey to this tool because I wanted to do it on stage for you guys to see. Now, let's see if Jersey wants to come back up and do some work. Jersey girl. Good girl. That's it, on your bed. Yes. Now, when you're setting your dog up to introduce them to a new anything brush today, I want you to be doing it in a really calm, quiet and familiar environment, okay? So your lounge room, the backyard, somewhere that your dog generally spends a lot of time and they're comfortable and relaxed in. Now, Jersey has actually been an assistance dog in her life, so even though this isn't her, her backyard, it's not her, her lounge room, she's pretty chill, she doesn't mind, she's had a lot of interactions with people in her time. So, all we're gonna do is we're gonna get them nice and comfy on their bed, their mat, whatever it is that they're comfortable on. And then we're going to introduce them to the tool. So, what I would be doing for a brand new puppy that has not been introduced to a grooming tool would just be showing them. Yes. Okay, now Jersey has a marker signal which is yes. And what that means is that you've done the right thing and you're getting a piece of food for that, okay? Now, if you, if you heard Dr. Shani talk earlier, she did talk a lot about different motivators. I'm using some kangaroo um, dog food, which is Jersey's absolute favorite. Now, if she was fearful of this tool right now, what I would be doing is taking it back a couple of steps, right? And I would just show her the tool. And I would actually spread some treats around it. What this is doing is it's causing, it's creating, sorry, a positive association with the tool that we have. Good girl. Now, sorry, I'm, I'm like coming in and out of like, you can hear me and you can't. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, you're all good, cool, awesome. Okay, so obviously Jersey doesn't care. She's pretty happy with the brush. She's not bothered by it at all. So what we can do is we can then up the level of this. So what I would be doing now is, yes. So I'm not sure if you guys saw that. She just popped her nose on it, okay? So that's just her acknowledging, yes that there's a piece of equipment and she wants the food, so I'm gonna come and touch the equipment. Yeah, good, yeah, ready? 
Okay, and this happens quite a lot. And what she's doing is she's going, nah, the food's over there. I don't care about that anymore. So I'm just gonna change it up a little bit for her. Yes! Now, as you can see, Jersey doesn't care. So I'm gonna up this a few levels. If you are doing this at home, I want you to keep working on this until your puppy or your dog is 100% comfortable with this tool. And what that would look like is they're enthusiastically coming up and nudging it or poking it or pouring at it to say, hey, where's my food? I want, I want this thing used around me, okay? Now, what we're gonna do, on your bet, yes, drop. We're going to introduce it to Jersey in actually brushing her. Now, I'm going to get some more treats out because I've just run out. Hey. So, as Dr. Shani was saying earlier, you want to work with what is what your dog is comfortable with, right? So, Jersey really loves to be patted around her chest. So, I'm going to start on that area. Now, what you would do is if your dog was fearful, okay, so we're talking puppies, never seen any of this kind of thing before, they might be a little bit unsure of it. Yeah, there we go. We're just gonna do one little touch, yes, and that's it. I didn't brush her, okay, just a touch. Good girl. All right, now we're gonna up that level and we're gonna start actually brushing her now. So, to do this, I'm gonna get her to stand up. Yeah. So, you have food in one hand, brush in the other, and yes. So see, you, you could see she was a little bit like, what are you doing to me? You just give, give more food, all right? Yeah, good girl, that's it. And we just keep going. We keep making it harder and harder. And I mean, by harder, I mean brushing them more. Yes, good girl, yes. And we're doing it in the way that, hey, they're my treats. If your dog starts to look uncomfortable, yes, then you stop, you give them a break, okay? What I do with dog training is I actually teach them a consent behavior, and this can look like a, quite a lot of different things. So, a consent behavior can look like stepping on to a place or a marker cue, and I'm gonna use the piece of carpet we have here. And as Jersey steps onto the carpet, that means she's comfortable to be groomed. If she steps away from the carpet or she moves off of the carpet, then I stop grooming, okay? <laughs> All right, sit, yes. Now, let's work on doing some actual brushing. So, I have a licky mat here. Does everybody know what a licky mat is? You've seen one, heard of it, have one hopefully. A licky mat is amazing because you can squish disgusting meat in there like I have today. Or you can use something a little bit nicer like peanut butter or cream cheese. <laughs> but it's a really highly arousing environment, okay? We have hundreds of people here, there's other dogs, there's lots of noises. So I need a really, really high motivator for Jersey. And Jersey's absolute favorite food is kangaroo, as you can probably tell already. And what this is gonna do is it's just going to provide her with a little distraction. You don't want that. And it's just something to keep her busy. Maybe I'm gonna turn this around so you guys can see her properly. Jersey. Ta. Now when you're taking something off your dog, please don't ever just take it off of them. We wanna make sure that we're swapping that with something just as good or better. Go this way, that's it, good girl. All right, let's try again. Just here, over here. Now, you literally just let them have a lick, good girl. And I'm sorry for those in the front row, you may get a little bit of floof on you right now because there is a lot of it. Now, okay, so see how 
jersey is backing away from me there. She's going, I don't want you to touch me. What she's doing is she's removing her consent from me. And that is more than fine, okay? We do not need to force our animals into being groomed. We can do it with them without having that force. We can do it in a fear-free way. So what I'm gonna do is try again. And we can add even more food. Jersey doesn't normally get food while she's getting brushed, so she's a little bit confused today as well. Come here, baby. Here we go. Now, as you can see, we've got the brush, all the fur. Jersey, careful. That's it. There we go. All right. Now, come here. Yes, there we go. So, nice and slow. All right. Now, if Jersey was to move away from me, if she was to step off of this mat right now, I would stop grooming. The way that you can do this with other things that you have at home is you can get boxes, all right? You can get your dog to stop, step into a box or onto a box for them to be able to consent to that behavior. We can teach them a cue as a chin rest, okay? And to do that, Jersey doesn't know a chin rest, guys, so this is a new exercise that she is learning right now. Um, you would hold your food. I would... <laughs> I would put my hand out and I would lure her in. Yes! Now Jersey is a very pawsy dog. She does everything with her paws. That's why she is offering the paw to me instead. And that is also the exact same way, yes, that you can do the nail trims and start getting them used to handling their paws and their nails being cut. Yes. And then you would continue where you would hold it for a little bit longer and you would give more treats. Okay. All right. So, see if, oh, baby girl. Come, hop up here. You're okay. Now, are you okay? Sorry guys, that was my bad. <laughs> she wasn't watching where she was going. Yeah, you stay, no, you stay here now, okay? Now, does anybody have any questions about what we've just taught Jersey today? I'm gonna stand back up. No questions, yes? Absolutely. Sorry, can you just ask your question again? <laughs> Thank you. Um, just wanted you to demonstrate the chin rest again. Sure. If that's possible. Yeah, yeah, of Thank course. You. So, you present your hand, you have your treats, okay? So it's literally teaching your dog just to put their hand, their head on your, on your hand for the food. Yes. So see when she touches my hand, her chin touches my hand, I say yes and I pay her. forcing her and I'm not even really luring her to do it. I'm waiting for her to do it. Now because she's offering me my paw, I'm not actually going to pay her for this behaviour because it's not what I'm asking her for. Yes. When she does the chin, that's when she'll get the treat. Yes. As you can see now, she's done it a couple of times. She's starting to realise, oh, it's the chin that I'm getting paid for. Do you want to do another one? <laughs> You're confused, aren't you? Yeah. Yes, there we go. So you can see the difference of when you would do this at home, if you started doing this with your dog, the I'm confused, I don't know really what you're asking, and then that starts to have that light bulb moment where it really clicks and they go, oh, it, you, it's the chin. Okay, I get that now. Yes. Hey. So that kind of consent behavior 
behavior is really great for our little dogs, right? Our poodles, our shih tzus, Maltese that need to have their face groomed, that need to be clipped and they have their brush, their faces brushed out, their ears cleaned, that type of thing. Because for a dog to have their face handled, their nose actually has a lot of nerve endings in it and it can be a little bit uncomfortable for them. So teaching them that consent behavior is, you can touch me now, I remove my consent when I move my chin away. Does that make sense for everyone? Yeah? Good girl, all right. Now, um, I think we are doing a prize draw, yes? Yeah? Yeah? Well, yeah? Cats? Yeah? I've got four dogs and a cat. I'm sorry, I've got four cats and a dog. Wrong way around. Um, <laughs> this tool has been insanely good for them. Um, and it's really great, honestly. Just fantastic. Who wants one? <laughs> You're ready to go. Um, okay, I'm going to choose number 77. Woo! <laughs> awesome. All right, so I'm going to get you guys to head over to the refresh stand there and they're going to give you the correct brush for your dog. Okay, so this brush comes in a few different sizes and shapes for the different types of coats and size of dog. Now, one thing I do want to mention is we've been talking to talking a lot about puppies today. This brush isn't suitable for a puppy coat yet, okay? We just want to make sure we're waiting until they've got their adult coat coming through because we don't want to be brushing out all of that soft puppy fur, okay? What age? I'm going to say six months. It really depends on the breed of dog here because every, every breed's coat is different. So we've got a double coated, we've got wiry coats, we've got soft, all of the different right? Um, it might vary depending on the breed of dog that you've got. I would just double check with the refresh. They'll be able to give you the exact information for the breed you have. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? What if you have multiple dogs? Is the process the same? It is the same. It is. What you would do if you have multiple dogs is you'd actually separate them, okay? And you could you teach them separately. So one might go out for a walk with mum, and the other one stays home with dad and gets a little grooming session done, and vice versa, okay? Then what you do is once they've been trained separately, you can then train them again together, and you'd make sure you've got two of these licky mats, okay? Or two, yeah, perfect, <laughs> for however many. Jessie! She's trying to visit everyone now, <laughs> get all of the packs. Um, so train them apart, they all have a separate licky mat, they all have a separate enrichment toy or two, and then you can bring them back together and you do it together. And you're going to make sure that it's a controlled environment, that there's no hyper arousal, so it's not zoomies hour, okay, it's not feeding hour, it's just a really calm, chilled out time, watching TV at night time and brushing them out that way, okay. I personally have used this on my cats and on Jersey and on my friend's dog, and they've all loved it, they've not had a problem with it. Um, it gets out a lot of their coat, a lot of the undercoat and everything as well. Um, what breed of dogs do you have? Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Absolutely. Um, awesome. Does anybody else have any questions? Yeah? Sorry. <laughs> You're thinking our puppy thinks when we give him the brush or when to go to groom him, it's playtime, so he wants to eat it. Yeah. What's the best way without yelling at him, making it a positive experience? Of course. That's a really amazing question. Thank you. Okay, so how, so how old was the puppy? Six months. Okay, so for a puppy of six months old, they're going through their bite stage, right? They're, they're really going through that naughty teenage puppy phase. So biting 
licking and chewing and mouthing is really, really common. What I would be doing is I would do a little play session. I'd give them an enrichment toy, something like a Kong or a licky mat. And, oh, that was loud, sorry. And then I would be setting it up at a time of the day that's naturally a quieter time for you guys. So if that's first thing in the morning or last thing at night, you set it up and you do it there. You get them onto their mat and you give them the toy and you teach them a consent behavior. So you step onto the mat, we start handling. And if you don't want to be handled, instead of biting, we just step off the mat. So if they start to ar 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 that type of thing, you stop, okay? And you just give them a little break. And what I would be doing is luring them off the mat so that they're learning, if I want that break, I just step off rather than ar 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 at your hands, right? Now, if you, go, if you try and do this when they're hyped up, highly aroused, playful, it is gonna be a disaster. No, no. I would be using their dinner, you know, get the dinner and use it as the training treats. <laughs> Use it as your training treats and be like, okay, dinner time is grooming time. You get your dinner, you groom, all right? So here's your dinner, I brush you, here's more dinner, I keep brushing you, right? And if they start getting over aroused and biting, we stop, okay? Um, also, if you are stressed or worried about it, do reach out to a behavioral trainer because they will be able to help you. And also being in teenage puppy phases, just hard work. <laughs> Especially with four dogs. <laughs> Not a problem at all. Thank you so much, guys, for listening. Um, yeah, feel free to ju uh, ju uh, jump and grab me if you need to ask any more questions, but I'll jump off stage now.